So we uh, have already graphed exponential equations, but let's take a look uh, at when we shift stuff around. Let's see what happens when we shift things. Um, yeah. After this, we'll do some log, log properties. So the title of this video is going to be uh, graphing and log properties, but that will be probably the next video, the log properties. So for this, um, we already know how to graph this a certain way. We could, in fact, just plug in points. Just keep plugging in random stuff until we get a good shape. And that's fine if you want to just plug in stuff. Um, but what I want to do is kind of relate it back to what we've already looked at. So uh, to graph this, I'm going to ignore the shifting. But first you're talking about like, what What? what, what you mean shifting? What you mean? I don't know what you mean. Uh, so I'm talking about the, the plus 3 and the minus 4. So... Uh, hopefully you remember that this will be backwards. Uh, when you have something doing to the x and you have a plus 3, you, you do the opposite. So it's, instead of moving to the right, which is maybe what you think would happen, it moves to the left. And then shift down 4, that's like on the outside. You're not doing it to the x, you're doing it to the whole entire rest of the function. So you shift down 4. Uh, so what I'm going to attempt to do is relate it back to what we've already been graphing and then see if we can shift it left 3, then down 4. So, uh, I'm just going to rewrite this as y equals 1 third times 4 raised to the x power. I'm ignoring the plus 3 and ignoring the minus 4. I'm ignoring the shifts. Uh, so, I'll just make a table of values for this. And normally, I would try out just negative 1, 0, and 1. Um, that usually is the center of my graph and it gives me a good idea of what it looks like. But if I need more, that's why I always leave space up here. If I need more, I'll, I'll put in more. So let's plug in negative 1. This I would do in my head. Uh, so 4 to the negative 1. Well, that's just 1 fourth. And then times 1 third. Right, because the exponent, when the exponent's negative, it flips it over, makes it a fraction. So uh, times one third, that's just going to be one twelfth, because you multiply the bottoms. One over twelve. If I plug in zero, that's four to the zero. Well, that's just one. So that would be one times one third. Of course, that's just one third. These aren't that nice. Uh, what about one? When I plug in one, I get four, right? And then times one third, that's four thirds. Okay, so that's four thirds there. And these aren't that great of numbers. This is 1.3 repeating. If I do it in my calculator, this is 0 0.3 repeating. And if I do 1 divided by 12, I get uh, 0 0.083 repeating. So none of those are nice. I probably wouldn't go up in the, in the negative direction anymore. Um, but just to get some bigger numbers, I would go in this direction. So 2. If I plugged in 2, uh, that's 4 squared is 16 times 1 third. That's just 16 over 3. You just like slide it over basically because 16 times 1 is 16. So um, 16 over 3 as a fraction, 16, I guess I can write it, over 3. Uh, so divided by 3 equals 5.3 repeating. That's a nicer number. I can plot that. That's pretty easy. But I want to do one more. Maybe even two more. I don't know. So 4 to the third, uh, that's 4 times 4, that's 64, right? 4 raised to the third is 64 times 1 third is 64 thirds. And that gives me 21.3 repeating. Yeah? So I have those points, but that's for this. I can just do that by plugging it into a calculator. Hopefully that part is easy. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to switch these. I want to shift them. So here I'm going to take this and shift it into a new ordered pair. So instead of having negative 1, comma, whatever that is, mm, I don't even want to graph that, actually. Yeah, I'm not going to graph that one. Uh, so I'll just shift this one. Now remember, at the very beginning, it said... Uh, that we have to shift left 3. So I'll use my x value. This is for left and right. Uh, and I'll shift left 3. Well, if I start at 0 and I go left 3, that gives me negative 3. 
that's just zero minus three and then shift down four so I'll take this and I'll shift down four now this can be kinda tricky with uh, decimals so what I would do is just type in point three repeating I'm typing it a bunch of times and then minus four and that gives me negative uh, whoops oh I didn't do this part this I'm supposed to do left three Oh, that was up here. Uh, so I subtract this minus 4, and that gives me negative 3.6 repeating. And then I'll do the same thing to this. So if I start at 1 and I shift left 3, that's subtracting 3. Remember, you do the opposite as what shows up there. Uh, that would be negative 2. Right? Because 1 minus 3, you can even do it in a calculator. You shouldn't need to, but you can if you want. Negative 2. And then 1.3 a bunch of times, minus 4. Minus 4 equals negative 2.6 repeating. Well, that's nice. And then I just keep going. Shift left 3, so that would give me negative 1, right? 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And 5.3 repeating, minus 4, that's going to be 1.3 repeating and so on. You just keep going. Uh, this would be minus 3, that would be 0, and 21 minus 4, 21.33333 is uh, 17.3 repeating, and it goes on and on and on and on. So, uh, that's great. We have that. We shifted those. I think you could do those in your head or do it on your calculator a lot faster without explaining, um, but you only have two problems to do. But what I want to do now is take a look at what my graph looks like. So here I have my graph, and I have to remember that I'm shifting not only uh, the graph, but the asymptote as well. And remember, the asymptote normally was the x-axis, and we would have stuff that like, gets closer and closer to the x-axis, or we'd have stuff that starts really close and then goes up like that to the x-axis. All of this is going to move around, like we're going to shift... Uh, so it kind of looks like that, but the asymptote also shifts. So let's see what that looks like. And that's what I'm going to graph first. I'm going to graph my asymptote. So normally the asymptote was on the x-axis, but I know that I have to shift that left 3. Well, if I take this line and shift it left 3, it's still the same line. It just slides along the x-axis. So that doesn't do anything. Left and right shifts don't do anything to asymptotes. Um, horizontal asymptotes anyway. And then we'll have down negative 4, or sorry, down 4. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. So here is where my new asymptote is. So now my function is going to look like something like this, going towards that, or maybe like that. Uh, so there we go. That's our new asymptote. Now all we got to do is plot these points, which is very, very easy. So I'll go negative 3, and then down 3.6. That's somewhere right there. I should zoom in. Negative uh, 2, down 2.6. Negative 2, down 2.6. Negative 1, and 1.3. Hmm, that's positive. Negative 1 and 1.3. That's right there. Uh, negative, no, sorry, 0 and 17.3. 0, and this only goes up to 10, so it's like way up there, 17.3. So there we have it. I actually didn't need that because it didn't fit on my graph. Uh, and we can go up, and it shoots up that way. I guess I could do it more. And then it goes up, and then also you have to continue this on, and it gets really, 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 really close to the x-axis. And there we go. Normally, we would have had something like this, but we moved to the left 3 and down 2, and then it looks like that. Hopefully, that's really simple. You just plug stuff in. Let's actually, yeah, let's review the steps. I'm going to erase this. Okay, so first, get the equation or the function without shifting. Get the points. Shift the points. Shift the asymptote vertically. That's, that's up or down. And then uh, plot the points, and you're done. It took a long time to explain, but I don't think it'll take you long to uh, actually do the problem.